Good evening and welcome to this week's Sunday Night Live where we're going to be talking about the topic of toxic positivity. And I'm really, really excited to be deep diving into this with you because it's something that now more than ever, we really need to bring light to this topic. And here is why. If this is the first time that you have joined a live, please let me know. I would love to say a big hello. If you think that there is anyone who would resonate with this, really needs to hear this, welcome them into this group. Or if you're watching on a different platform, tag, share. It's always so appreciative, uh, appreciated from my part. But let's look at this toxic positivity. You may have heard of this before. And if not, I think that it's really, really, really important for us, not only for ourselves to be aware of this in case we have it done to us, but actually it's a really, really powerful thing for us to be aware of for if we are ever supporting or around other people. This is a really, really good way to grow our emotional intelligence when we understand the different flip sides to things such as positivity, negativity, etc. So I've made a couple of notes beforehand. If I was to summarise my own interpretation of toxic positivity that I've encountered myself and I have also been in the shoes of, I've said that it's it's when we use positivity to override seeing, accepting and dealing with negative emotions. To some degree, it's actually a form of avoidance. So if we are dishing out positivity, let's just take this as ourselves. If we are going through something pretty not nice, whether that is traumatic, it might just be a life change that you are struggling with. If we just say, do you know what? Good vibes only, or I'm only going to think positive thoughts, or that's it. No more, look, the sun's always brighter on the other side, or failure's not an option for me. What we're doing there is completely avoiding but also saying that the flip side to those emotions aren't valid. We're basically pushing down any of our not so, what's the word I'm looking for? The emotions that, let's be honest, it may be uncomfortable to deal with. We may not really think, we. this is something I hear all the time, I've just not got the time to deal with those emotions. So we tend to just paint on this I'm going to smile through it or I'm just going to think positive thoughts, but it can be really, really diminishing to our emotional well-being. So that is when we're doing it ourselves. And what tends to happen is that we dismiss our own feelings. We hide painful emotions. We ignore problems by just going, do you know what? It's OK. I'm just going to think positive. I'm just going to put that to one side everything's going to be okay. Everything is going to be okay. Positive quotes. We see them a lot. This is why I've almost like wanted to talk about this topic so much, but also I'm going to share a little bit of a personal story as well in a minute. And the other thing that tends to happen is that you can feel guilty for expressing or feeling, let's say, it's sadness, anger, fear, you're like, oh God, I'm so frustrated, or you feel guilty for it. And as we said, this can be massively a detriment to your overall well being, your mental health, physical health, spiritual health. Let's turn this on its head as well, because sometimes you can have it done to you. You can experience toxic positivity from friends, from colleagues, from family members, and this may be completely unbeknown to them. It may be malicious, like we, we just don't know and it isn't our business to try to deep dive into why people do what they do, but it, it is your business to put boundaries in place, to have 
that sense of responsibility and resilience. And this is where that emotional intelligence massively comes in. So if you ever do experience people just kind of, let's say you're going through something tough at work and they just brush it off and say things like, think happy thoughts. Here is something which you can reframe it to is I'm going to experience my emotions how it feels right for me. I deserve to feel how I feel. My emotions are valid. What I'm feeling right now is okay. I'm going to grow through this. So what we're recognizing here, that where you are, how you feel, it may not be the best thing ever, but it's okay. Because you know that once you have felt your feelings, it's actually a form of healing when you can really sit and experience it. That then gives you firm foundations to begin to grow through it, to begin to take action, to begin to change things, to begin to heal. If we just paint over, ignore, push to one side, or even have it done to us, it can make us feel that our feelings aren't valid. So let me know below if this resonates with you, if you've ever experienced anything like this. I've massively have had this done to me before. And back in my early, early personal development days, I was probably, I've been really reflecting on this, someone who was just, if you really just think positively, you can work your way through it. Now, obviously, to some degree, it is so helpful to think positive thoughts, to affirm things to yourself. But if we're only doing that and getting up in the morning and saying, do you know what? Everything's going to be OK. I've got a roof over my head. Everything's going to be OK. If we're not backing that up with acknowledging how we feel and talking and expressing and being OK with things not always being okay. Like, let's be honest, life sometimes deals us a curveball. I've had some really tough news this afternoon. I have fully felt into those emotions and that's okay. Never could I ever just say, well, everything's just going to be okay because let's be honest, we don't always know that. But what we do know is that if you surround yourself and say, I'm surrounded by loved ones, we're going to get through this together no matter what. We're there for each other. Can you see the difference there between everything's going to be okay and no matter what happens, we're going to get through this together or we're going to be okay in the long run? Such a, it is like a grey line. So I'm actually going to create a post and it will go out probably tomorrow actually now. And I'm going to share with you a list of things to either avoid saying yourself to somebody else, because like I said, sometimes we just have the best intentions, the best intentions. If you're sat with a friend or a loved one and they're going through a tough time, you want to gear them up. You want to say to them, listen, you, you, there's so many more fish in the sea. You've got this no matter what happens. You don't quit. Reeds don't quit. Whoever you are, you don't quit. Um, good vibes only. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. How many times have we heard that? No, no. Just because something didn't kill you doesn't mean that your emotions aren't valid about that thing. So like I said, we may experience this ourselves. We may even be dishing a bit of it out. So I'm going to share with you some things to avoid and some replacements, something that you can begin to say. And this is a really, really powerful skill to embody for yourself. And then of course, it is about the boundaries. If you ever experience it coming from other people, this is about you knowing that they may just be doing their best. So if someone ever says to you that what doesn't kill, kill you makes you stronger, or you'll get over it, you'll get over it, you're good looking, you'll get over it. I know I once had a client, oh, and it was tragic. And they'd experienced a miscarriage. But because they already had children, someone has said to them, well, at least you have children. At least you already have children. Ooh, like that will have come from such a such a, a meaningful place and a, a good place. 
but that it can be so, so toxic for someone if they're trying to get through something or feeling or grieving or feeling those emotions. So like I said, this is something for us, but I'm also going to share with you some things that you can really learn and grow through as well. So I'm hoping that this has come at a good time for you. And I think with what we see flooded all over social media, it really can be, okay, I get it, I'm gonna think more positive, but just so you know, no matter how you feel, it's valid. And this is where the emotional intelligence comes from. It's knowing you have a choice when you're ready to change that. So as a coach myself, in particular a mindset coach, I work with small businesses, startups, um, you name it, like mindset underpins everything. But when it comes to those life changes, embodying how you feel and really working through that is the most powerful thing for activating your, your emotional intelligence. It really, really is. It is saying, I'm valid, I'm worthy. And even if you've been conditioned from a child to keep it, keep it stump, you can begin to repair and you can begin to relearn this way of thinking and being. So let me know below if this has resonated with you, if you've ever experienced toxic positivity yourself, maybe you're sat there and you're like, holy crap, I've said these things before. That was me. Like, like I said, I have many, many moons ago been in that place where I was like, positivity is the answer. And there's a time and a place we want to be replacing it with hope and optimism. If I was to leave you with anything, hope and optimism is the most powerful thing. Saying to someone, that is hard. What you're going through is hard, but I believe in you. Things could be really tough. I'm here for you. I, I, I can hear what you're saying. Just know that, that together we can get through this. Can we see the difference there? So... I would love to hear your thoughts on this. And like I said, if this resonates, add people into the group. This is a free group, um, a support group. If you're in the Awaken the Warrior group, if this is on YouTube, Instagram, of course, tag, share. I will be incredibly grateful because someone may just need to hear this tonight or whenever you're watching. So my name is Carol Ann Reed. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I look forward to catching up with you on another live very, very soon. Have a great rest of your evening. Bye, bye, bye.